The state of Israel has endured contentious warfare for its entire existence. No sooner had it been declared in May 1948 than it became involved in a struggle for survival, fighting its neighbors in a ferocious clash. This was the first Arab-Israeli war, but it would be far from the last. Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I am taking a first look of a brand new game out, uh, published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. The developer is Warfare Sims, you may be familiar with it already. The parent game to this is Command Modern Air Naval Operations, and the game today we're looking at is Command Shifting Sands. Now, this kind of falls into the interesting DLC slash standalone world that some Matrix games live in. And what I mean by that is Command Shifting Stan Sands is a standalone game. It is a game you can buy and play by itself, but it also acts as an add-on to the Command Modern Air Naval Operations uh, family, if you will. So if you buy Command Modern Air Naval Operations, the parent game, then you can access everything in Command Shifting Sands within a campaign dialogue, but it fits alongside the rest of your content. If you buy just Command Shifting Sands, then you can play Command Shifting Sands, but you don't have access to the rest of the Command uh, Stable, if you will. Now, this game did come out a couple of weeks ago, so when I say brand new, it's brand new to the channel, uh, and it's still very new in terms of it's, what, like a month or two old, if even that. Um, but it's, it's not, you know, just out today. Um, this is my first look. I haven't had a lot of time to play any games, let alone, you know, basically I've been playing Ultimate General and I've been playing Bomber Crew and that's kind of been all I've had time for lately and I've been doing a bad job of keeping an eye on other games that are new, other games that are coming out. I did a little bit of Field of Glory, not as much as I would like, so I'll probably return to that. But Command Shifting Sands is a game I wanted to take a look at and the reason I wanted to take a look at it was it kind of breaks the mold. A lot of the Command products focus on the U.S. versus the USSR during the Cold War or some sort of, you know, near future war against China. In fact, I haven't looked at it, but I will look at it at some point. I believe Command Chains of War is sort of a U.S. and its Pacific Allies versus China and North Korea. That's another uh, expansion which has come out since I've really covered Command. Um, I know that I did Northern Inferno a while back, which follows the uh, sort of Cold War USSR versus uh, Warsaw Pact, or USSR slash Warsaw Pact versus NATO slash USA. I covered that a while back. That was the original sort of first standalone version of Command. But Command Shifting Sands is different in that it pits Israel versus the uh, Middle Eastern nations, which is interesting, right? Because it covers a vast period of time. It covers the 1950s, uh, well, really late 1940s, all the way through to at least the 80s. I'm not quite sure when this ends. Um, but it also is no longer the typical blue versus red, typical US versus Russia. Um, you know, you see a wide variety of equipment from a wide variety of nations crammed into a couple of, you know, high intensity conflicts but also some other interesting uh, conflicts as well that are kind of like sub conflicts within the whole sphere so i'm curious to see what command does with that and see how that all works out so i'm going to go ahead and choose command shifting sands and i'm going to go ahead and start a new campaign so here is the red sea rumble this is where the campaign starts it's egypt versus the united kingdom huh okay so it's 1956 october uh, the location is the Gulf of Suez in Egypt. The campaign mission, or this mission, duration is six hours, and we're playing as the United Kingdom. Okay, so on late October 1956, as the Suez Crisis bloomed out to full intervention, a number of Royal Navy ships found themselves in the Red Sea, cut off from the rest of the active British forces. As has always been the case, the Red Sea was, a cho was cho choked full of neutral and commercial shipping, so rules of engagement were tight. Even against positively identified Egyptian vessels, the instructions were to warn and turn ships around and engage only as self-defense. Okay. Uh, on the evening of October 31st, HMS Newfoundland, a British Fiji-class cruiser, encountered a darkened ship passing her to the opposite direction. The Newfoundland closed to 1,500 yards, came parallel to the ship, signaling to heave to or be fired upon. The darkened ship later identified as the Egyptian Navy frigate Domat. 
signaled and acknowledged and appeared to slow down, then suddenly extinguished its running lights and trained her guns on the Royal Navy ships. Interesting. Newfoundland signaled to her consorts that she was engaged with a confirmed hostile, and Domont likewise called for reinforcements. The fight was on. Okay, interesting. So this first scenario in the campaign for command uh, shifting sands appears to be a conflict between British ships and Egyptian ships during the Suez crisis in the 1950s. So even this looks at a different sort of less explored period in command history anyway, uh, where you have the British and the French intervening in a uh, attempt to, I think it's an attempt to kind of na not nationalize, but denationalize the Suez Canal, keep it safe essentially for their interests for local shipping as this piece of land had been turned over to the Egyptian government. The Egyptian government was in the process of kind of clamping down its controls in Suez in a way that uh, the former great powers, which did not yet think of themselves as former great powers, still sort of considered themselves as great powers, uh, were not willing to accept. Uh, actually, historically, it all ends when the United States gets involved and basically tells the British and French to knock it off. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, let's jump in here. So we're playing, it's also kind of interesting that we're playing with some former World War II warships. The Fiji class was a light cruiser class during World War II for the British. Uh, and I think the Egyptian ships are actually former British ships as well. So you've got a lot of sort of World War II tech fighting in the 1950s, which command I don't think generally goes back all the way to World War II. I don't know how well they handle non-smart weapons, but this is really my first battle to try and figure it out. So I guess we'll see, because this is presumably going to be a gunfight. Uh, one which I've never had in command before, because um, I typically don't play the 50s scenarios. Uh, Egyptian naval forces have deployed into the Red Sea to intercept any vessels trying to enter the Suez Canal region. HMS Newfoundland and other UK units are in the area to maintain an overt posture in the area. Orders to patrol between Point Alpha and Point Bravo, exchange and destroy any Egyptian naval units, execution task or TG task group, 32401 and 32402 are to patrol the Red Sea and are to gauge Egyptian warships that are detected demonstrating hostile intent. Rules of engagement dictate that you may fire only after being fired upon. UK Orbit, Order of Battle, HMS Newfoundland and HMS Diana in Task Group 32, 32401 and HMS Crane, HMS Modest and RFA Wave Sovereign in Task Group 32. Or .02. I don't know why I say 32 every time. The Egyptian order of battle, I don't know why it gives, us me, it gives me this up front, but appears to be a river class frigate. Oh, this is probably based on intelligence. A river class frigate, or river class frigates, so plural, X Royal Navy, and Bangor class uh, MCMs, X Royal Navy. Also possible motor torpedo boats. Okay. Uh, command, our flagship is the HMS Newfoundland. Uh, which, again, is doesn't tell me their class. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter the scenario. We enter the scenario paused. We can see our task groups are split into two groups. We can see that task point alpha is way up here in the north. Point Bravo is down here in the south. It appears that our southern task group is surrounded by a lot of uh, neutral shipping and is approaching point Bravo. Our northern group is also moving toward point alpha. The northern group appears to consist of two vessels, HMS Newfoundland and uh, HMS Diana. The Newfoundland is a 19, is a daring class destroyer. Okay, so she's a destroyer. And does she have two harpoons? Does the harpoon even exist yet? Um, Anti-submarine warfare mortar. Uh, and then some guns. So no, no missiles as far as I can tell. That's fine. Uh, An HMS Newfoundland is a light cruiser of the Fiji class, as we looked at before. Uh, also, I don't believe any missiles, just guns. A little bit heavier guns, 102 millimeter. The Diana has... Uh, oh, actually, the Diana has heavier guns, 114 millimeter. That's interesting. Um, okay. And the southern task group consists of three ships. The RFA Wave Sovereign is what? An A207 Wave? What the hell is that? Do they even have any guns? Uh, okay. It's a fleet oiler. Oh, great. A fleet oiler. Oh, okay. Um, the Southern Group also has two Black Swan class frigates. Um, the HMS Modest and the HMS Crane. 
Uh, they have 102 millimeter guns as their main guns with some Bofors anti-aircraft gun. That southern force is pretty light. Um, I don't know if they're going to get there in time, but I'm actually, my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to order my northern group uh, to move south. Because that seems really like a, a destroyer and a light cruiser seem pretty strong, especially if they're being faced by frigates. But if all we have is two frigates in the south, that's a little bit concerning. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give these guys some orders to, to plot a course south uh, and meet up with the southern task force. I just don't think that the northern task force... Actually, let's make sure... Yeah, the Northern Task Force's plot's going to take it north. I'm just not sure that the, the Southern Task Force is... I don't know what's all coming at us, but I just get the sense that two frigates by themselves seem to me like they're under strength, especially with all these ships around. I don't know what are adversaries and what are neutrals. So we've got a couple of uh, objects here that are identified as neutrals in the north. You see the little green symbol tells us they at least they're presumed to be friendly. Uh, the yellow means that they're neutrals, We're not, but we're not quite sure. Not neutrals, they're unidentified. The green means neutral. Blue means friendly, and red means hostile. So we've got a lot of ships around these two frigates. We don't know what are hostile or what are friendly. We've got a lot of ships around these ships up here. Again, not knowing what are hostile or what are friendly. I would rather just combine into one task force, sort of one death stack, and see how this all shapes out. So let's go ahead and get that started. I've ordered these guys to head south. I should actually check... Um, throttle. Let's set them to full. I want to get them there as quick as possible. 27 knots should be the standard. And we'll go ahead and start. So you can see here, these are these blue things are ships within the task force. So you can see, we scan up here. We've got, um, I don't know which ship this is, but it's attached to the task group. So it's one of the two ships, and then the other one represents sort of this main task group that we can click on. We can change our map sensors to, you know, show different things. So, selected group, uh, we can go ahead and change to a unit view, which then gives us the HMS Newfoundland and the HMS Diana. Uh, or we can change it back to a group view, which is what I prefer because I'm selecting units by group anyway. Um, so that's what we'll do. In the south, um, I don't know. Got three ships here. I don't know which one is. Let's switch over to the unit view real quick. So this is the Wave Sovereign in the middle, the oiler, and they've got the two frigates kind of trailing fore and aft. Now I'm presuming these ships all kind of work in the same way that, um, not work in the same way, but I'm presuming they all are, their layout is typical gun oriented ships where you've got heavy armament in the front and rear, but not a ton able to train four so like half your guns can train forward half can train aft but if you turn your broadside to a target then they can all train on it so i'm actually going to turn these guys north uh toward the coast and uh just so that they're presenting their broadsides toward any potential threats it looks like this one's going away this guy's coming kind of coming in um so we'll kind of do that we'll also go ahead and uh set our uh, throttle if you will to full to get us up to 18 knots i think see if it actually stays there Let's see here throttle yep switch to full that's a manual override I feel like they're not actually going desired speed six not no I'm confused Desired speed 15 knots. Why are they switching me down? Oh, I don't know what my oiler can make. Maybe I can't make that speed. Nine knots, is that the best I can do? Nope, looks like nine knots is the best we can do. I'm assuming that's due to the fleet oiler. What are our guys in the north doing? Is that the best they can make? Jeez, why would you cut it down to six? I guess I don't understand some of the, the way that the game's throttling works. But I don't understand why you'd slow it down. 
Like, we're trying to get you down there as quick as possible. They need help. I'll take 12 knots. That works. Oh, nice. Okay, so it was actually just a matter of them throttling up. As you can see now that they're adjusting, I think. Anyway, playing with the... the con <laughs> okay. I'm sure this is exciting! Exciting to watch me fight with the... Uh, with the speed settings. Of a game that admittedly I don't know as well as I would like. Yep, see, they're just taking their time to accelerate. Alright, so... I don't know... Got five hours, we've been going for five minutes because I've accelerated this to f speed five. And I'm not sure... You know, this is kind of a first look, but I don't have impressions yet because it's taking... It's a little bit slower to develop than some games. Um, I guess we can speed it up to 15 seconds. Wait, what just happened? Building has been positively identified as neutral. 10.05. That was three minutes ago. That was five minutes in. Okay. Um, losses and expenditures. Nothing expended yet. No losses yet. And our... Where are we here? Scoring is an average. It's a zero. Current score is a zero. Uh, the past score for the campaign is 170. So presumably we're going to have to do something. You can go much faster than this, but given I don't know this scenario, and I don't know how long it's gonna gonna take, I also don't want to just um I don't want to blast through it and get half my ships killed because I'm I'm going too quickly. New ship detected here. I'm assuming that's why we got the little ping, because it just showed up. Cruisers are moving south. Task group is moving north. We'll accelerate to 30 seconds. Still nothing. All right, I'm going to shift this guy's plot north a little bit. Just because I'm kind of worried that this guy could be a, a hostile too. So... Anyone who's pointed toward me as a threat, this guy's pointed kind of toward me, so I'm going to head this way. This guy's pointed toward me, so he could be a threat. This guy's headed away, and we're, it looks like we've identified him as a civilian. So we're not sure if he's a friendly or not, uh, but he is identified as a civilian, so presumably he's not a threat. Uh, still, our, our group hasn't classified him as friendly or, or, or not hostile yet. But let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so our ships are coming in closer. Oh shit, hostile, hostile. Rashid. All right, let's go ahead and plot this course slightly different. So we've got an enemy ship plotted here. We're moving at flank speed, or not flank, but full speed. Uh, it is four or 12.41 midnight. It's 41 hours after midnight. Um, I'm not sure what the range is on this. Let's see what our attack options are. Uh, target is outside the effective arc. We can fire some of our weapons on him, though. So he's a confirmed hostile. He's not shooting at us yet. All right. Allocate all weapons to this target. Allocate all weapons to this target. All right, I guess we're going to see what happens. We're going to open up on it. It's headed away from us. It's interesting because we haven't been engaged by the Rashid. It's heading away from us at 18 knots. Our destroyers and cruisers are opening fire on the Rashid. And uh, our southern group is so far not engaged. It does look like that civilian here has been identified as sort of not a threat. But Do Dawa? Doa? Um, let's see here. Zooming in. We've also got a friendly or a civilian that we're shooting around, if you will. So very complicated here. You can see our rounds are starting to land near the Rashid. 49 feet off target. 79 feet off target here. 
These are larger weapons, I believe. I believe they're our main battery. Uh, BDA says light damage, no flooding, no fire. Uh, I'm guessing maybe that's just shell damage. Ooh, 100% penetration achieved. Um, so we are starting to strike home. Those are 114 millimeter guns striking home on the Rashid. A uh, couple of hits, two hits. Third hit just came in. You can see here on the left side of the screen, you've got the results that are populating. And uh, I could speed things up a little bit as well, but um, I've never engaged in surface combat before uh, outside of, you know, firing missiles and stuff. That's usually the... I play much more 1980s, 1990s, some 2000s scenarios. So you don't often get that. But you can see here, um, these are some more rapid firing guns, the smaller weapons on our sort of rear ship. Let's change the map settings to unit view. So the HMS Diana is firing. Um, actually, she's got the destroyer rounds, right? So she's got the bigger bigger weapons. I think she's got the 114, but I think um, the Diana's maybe also firing some 40 millimeters. I'm not sure. Either way, it's firing at a much more steady clip than the uh, HMS Newfoundland, uh, which has, let's see, weapons. has 102 millimeters in twin turrets. Now the nice thing is here, you've got 400 rounds of ammunition on most of these guns. So you've got very, very um, ample ammunition stocks, presumably. Although at the rate that the Deanna is firing, who knows. Um, I'm assuming these guys also have radar direction assist. I don't know if it shows up in the sensors. Yep, they've got radar. So presumably it's a fire, yep, FCR, fire control radar. So, you know, you think, oh, these are surface ships that are firing, you know, regular guns. These seem to be hitting quite a lot of, t of the time. Uh, but part of that's also because they're radar guided. So they've got a very good fix on their target here as we see more and more shells striking home and just obliterating the Rashid here. You can see this little red icon here uh, means that the enemy is suffering heavy damage. BDA estimates heavy damage. Enemy ship is moving at six knots. It's got half of this bar filled up with fire. Its flooding is almost the, all the way full. Uh, she's going to break up and sink very shortly, I think. Yep, there you go. Event Rashid sunk has been fired. So that was an event that was fired. Um, let's go ahead and pause for a second and take stock. It didn't look like the Rashid got any fire off on us. Um, take a look at the scoring. We've got a score of 50 now for sinking the Rashid. So obviously there are a bunch more ships that we have to sink. Um, let's go over here. No special actions. Not going to be satellite. I guess we didn't get a message of any kind. So... Presumably we just keep going. Alright. So we're going to keep closing the ground. I think that's a good decision. These northern, tr uh, northern um, ships seem to be... Um, Pretty powerful, at least they dealt with the Rashid pretty darn quickly. Again, our southern ships are more frigate oriented. Now, again, I haven't played this scenario really before. I think I played it for like 10 minutes. So I have a sense that the southern force is going to face some strong opposition. Um, but this is still very much a first look. I got some tips or pointers, if you will, from uh, a couple of friends who said, hey, make sure you send the northern force to face the southern force. So this is, I guess, a little bit of a spoiler. I'm not a genius in that sense. Um, but not entirely sure what to expect from here on out. I actually didn't know that was the Rashid, um, but I'm glad we, we dealt with it pretty quickly, and I guess we'll just kind of keep on keeping on and keep closing these vessels uh, toward each other. Let's see, we're almost a point Bravo. Oh, hostiles detected south of the southern force now. Uh, this is the El Qatar. It hasn't fired on us yet, so I'm going to see if I can go ahead and keep moving north while at the same time maybe engaging... Um, let's see here. Let's switch this back over to group view. Wait, I already did. All right, let's go ahead and attack. Let's give it a manual option. We could choose manual or attack auto as well, just for what it's worth. So the Royal Sovereign has no weapons it can train, and the other guys, the weapons are all, the enemy is outside of their firing arc. So I guess we're going to have to continue on and see what happens here. But they've identified this enemy as a threat. Nobody's shooting at anybody yet. 
They're moving at 11 knots. The El Qatar is moving at 30 knots. So certainly has the speed advantage here, thanks in large part to the fact that we've got frickin' fleet oilers with us. Not hampering us at all. Our northern force is moving south at 27 knots, though. They're, they're making good time. Um, I'm not too worried about fuel economy at this point, frankly, just given the fact that uh, this is a, f a six hour scenario or something like that. We're already one sixth of the way in. I don't think I'm going to burn through all my fuel in just six hours. Um, but I don't. We've got, we've got a closing speed with this northern force of about the same speed that the El Qatar is. They're also not really closing with us, they're broadside on. Um, let's take a look here. We've also got a fleet oiler, so presumably, um, presumably we can, um, share rain symbol, I already got that. Um, so presumably we've got enough to, uh, you know, we could refuel if we really needed it. We're about two nautical miles off. It doesn't seem like very far, but I think if they're only five inch shells, I don't know what the range on those things are. Our uh, northern forces radar. If I assume this red line indicates radar. Are they surface weapons? No. Uh, not the sensors. I'm not quite sure what everything is. Uh, but either way, we're. It appears we're in range of the enemy. Our ship's range is this red icon, so we're not quite in range in the northern force, isn't quite in range of the El Qatar. It's taking, it's trying to head us off a little bit. It's not that far off. I gotta imagine we should be able to engage. It may just have been outside the firing arc as well, which is, I believe, what it technically said. All right, so the modest can fire does have automatic fire, so we're gonna allocate all weapons on this vessel to the hostile target. Even some bofers look like they may be in range. There you go, that sound effect was clearly the bofers firing. I'm debating turning broadside on to get our northern ship in range. We'll see how this all works out. If we can damage this guy heavily before he opens fire, then it may not be necessary. Some of those bofers are already hitting their target here. Actually, those aren't the bofers. Those are the initial shots are the 102 millimeter twin uh, twin turret there, and they're getting some pretty darn accurate fire there. I don't know why the enemy didn't open fire on me. That's interesting. Uh, these shells landing around it, I believe now, are, are the bofers. Yep, you got them popping up here. So we're doing some damage to the enemy. Speed things up a little bit if he's not going to shoot back. I don't know why they're not shooting back. But, you know, if one of our frigates can deal with this enemy... What kind of ship is he, anyway? Alcatar is... A destroyer. Really? 114 millimeter. I don't know why he's not shooting back. In either case... I'm fine with that. Maybe he hasn't identified, he didn't identify us, and then he was getting hit too hard too too quickly. All right, can we attack with our other ship yet? Does it have a, does it have a eyes on? Yes. Okay, so our other ship does have the range now, uh, and it also has the angle to use its weapons. So the, uh, the modest, I believe, is reloading or something to that effect. Um, in either case... The Alcatar has already suffered medium damage, and now it's getting some additional shell fire coming in. We actually had a malfunction on one of our rounds, so I guess there was a, a dud in there. Some, a few duds, actually. Old World War II shells, just not, not playing through. Let's zoom out and see the Northern Force just has friendlies around it. So... We'll keep kind of speeding through this engagement. It's up to heavy damage for the Alcatar. And our uh, Modist has reloaded and started firing as well. 
I don't know how many... I know I said 400 rounds and we had a lot of ammo. <laughs> I don't know how quickly we can pour through that. Alright, so the enemy's been destroyed. You can see BDA destroyed. We've still got some rounds in flight. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to the unit view and see where we're at for ammo. Magazines... Oh wow, they only used 20 main 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 guns. The 40 millimeter Bofors have used a little bit higher percentage, but even so, still over 75% for the magazines on all of that. So I don't think ammo is going to be an issue here. We'll switch back over to group view, um, and let's just kind of get these ships headed in the the right direction toward each other. Well, they can close. All right, we'll head south. I don't. All right. Of course. All right, so four hours and 38 minutes in. Where are we at scoring-wise? We're at a major victory, although we do need a 170 score to pass the scenario. Our current score is 125. We haven't lost anything, so we go to expenditures. No United Kingdom losses. The enemy hasn't fired a shot, and they've lost two of their ships. We've fired quite a few shells here, quite a few 102 millimeter uh, Mark 16 twin HE burst, two rounds. 170 of them, actually. But we've still got sufficient ammunition on left. That's between two ships. Um, so I think, actually, now, these guys are moving forward at 11 knots. I think we're going to set this task force's throttle speed. Uh, let's go ahead and set them. Maybe what's cruise speed? Somewhere around there. Um, they're close enough to lend support, so we'll go ahead and kind of keep on keeping on, if you will. We're going to go ahead and uh, switch the, the plotted course north. And I think what we'll do is we'll head toward the northern objective here. There's still a lot of ships up here. We've got to get to Point Alpha. We'll head toward Point Alpha with both these groups in style, sailing side by side as if it's a Grand Royal Navy review from back in the, the days of the, the height of the Royal Navy. Um... So far, it doesn't seem too intimidating. I know I'm closing in on about a half an hour of playtime. Um, so this was my first impressions video. This is certainly not a review at this stage as we move our ships north. But what I will say, the game is an interesting time period. Um, the first scenario is looking at uh, the Suez Crisis. I'm not sure what the other scenarios look like, uh, but obviously I guess we'll find out. Um, so far, uh, fighting with regular guns in a 50s era uh, period seems, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, I guess I had the advantage that the enemy didn't shoot back at me, but I'm loving the setting uh, and I'm really intrigued by this game. I'm going to continue diving into it and I'm going to do more episodes on it. Uh, but so far, so good. And, um, you know, with that being said, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and... Uh, we've got a lot of friendlies around. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll go ahead and uh, sign off for today. Uh, that northern group getting a little bit far ahead of itself. I think we'll sign off for today and we'll pick this battle up next time. Um, and we'll look at part two of sort of my initial look of, I guess this is Red Sea Rumble is the name of the scenario, uh, within uh, Command Modern Air Naval Operations. Command Shifting Sands is the name of this uh, DLC or standalone pack or whatever you want to call it. Um, with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. Not a lot of initial impressions yet, um, but I may have to have a separate video where I kind of recap my thoughts. This has been much more of a, all right, this is the setting, okay, this is the scenario, and let's see what it all looks like. Um, this is the kind of game that takes a little bit longer sometimes to give your initial view of it. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, pretty positive, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, guys, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.